What's going on guys? Welcome back to shop. Uh, as I'm out here just contemplating uh, the possibilities of nuclear war and World War III and civil war here in the United States and uh, trying to get my preps together and all this stuff, uh, you know, I'm watching and listening to the news that's coming out on the mainstream media. And I've actually had a realization here recently that uh, the mainstream media has a much, much wider grasp than I ever knew before. I, I thought, you know, it was just the main channels, the, the main MSM news sites like, you know, NBC, CNBC, CNN, uh, those types of places, right? Uh, but no, it's, it's, it's much, much wider than that. It's the majority, even Fox News, although they get lumped in as a conservative news outlet, uh, that's not true. I'm seeing people on both sides of the aisle beating the war drums to get the United States more heavily involved than we already are in this skirmish between Ukraine and Russia. And as I've done research on this, I've, I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't buy what the mainstream media is selling. Uh, they're saying that this is 100% Putin's fault and there's, you know, there's no one else to blame and basically it's all Putin. He just, you know, up and decided to go into Ukraine one day because he's a meanie, right? And he's a dictator, authoritarian, uh, and he's going to come in and re-implement the USSR. I've been hearing that talk over and over. They're saying that uh, Putin is acting like Stalin. Uh, Biden came out the other, a day or two ago and said Putin is a war criminal, Uh which is just interesting. Uh, whether or not Biden is an actual war criminal or not is yet to be determined. Uh, but he's certainly a criminal and there, his family, the Biden crime family has all sorts of stuff coming out about Hunter's laptop. Suddenly, now that it's more convenient, that stuff is coming out. But when it would have helped Donald Trump win re-election, it didn't come out because the media suppressed that information. So guys, we have seen over the top propaganda coming out really since the beginning of COVID, uh, when that first started hitting the scene. I mean, it was really before then, if you think about it, because the way they treated Trump and everything they did, the Russia disinformation, it was Russia, Russia, Russia for, for at least two and a half out of the four years of his terms, of Trump's term. So anyways, I've been doing a lot more digging and research and I've been trying to find out, are there any other parties uh, that, you know, shoulder some of the blame? I'm not saying all of the blame. I'm not saying that Putin is innocent in any of this stuff. All I'm saying is that we need to look at things through the perspective of reality. And what is the perspective of reality? It's the truth. The United States has been dicking around in foreign affairs with other countries for 50 years or more, 75 years installing puppets that are pro-West puppets, people that will do what they think the United States wants them to do. And, you know, just on and on, so many things that you can look back to and go, yeah, yeah, that was the United States doing that. And during Barack Obama, things went off the rails as far as that stuff goes. I mean, a lot of people say that he was directly responsible or indirectly responsible through his minions of starting the Arab Spring over in Egypt. Um, people died there. I mean, is, is, is Barack Obama a war criminal and his associates for going out and doing these uh, regime changes throughout the world? Is, is, is that, uh, does that ever come back to make them guilty of war crimes? No, it never does because they cover all this stuff up and they use subordinates so it never directly comes back to them. So as I've been researching and learning more about this Ukraine situation, which I'll admit, I've never been to the Ukraine. I don't know anything about their local politics, but I do know this. The United States is poking its finger and wagging the dog all over this Ukraine situation. And they're doing it in a convenient fashion so that Biden can blame all of his failed policies, all of them from the open border. Nobody's talking about any of the important critical issues that are going on in the United States anymore because we've got this Ukraine bullshit being shoved down our throat every night and getting people, even people on my side that I thought were conservatives are beating the war drums to go over to Ukraine and to help them out and get us involved in World War III. I think they have lost their freaking minds. This is insane. We do not want to be in World War III with Russia and China because China is on Russia's side, if you don't know. So, all hell is breaking loose, guys. The Saudis are threatening to get us off the petrodollar. Uh, if you're not stocked up by now, frankly, you ain't going to make it. You better go out and get your shit together and get it in gear tonight and go out and get the things you're going to need to survive. I mean, famine. 
Wars, rumors of wars. What else do you need to hear? It, it, this stuff comes from revelations. Uh, we are rapidly approaching the end of time or the end of, the end of days as we know it. Maybe it won't go full thermonuclear. Maybe it doesn't have to. Maybe it just has to destroy the United States economy and then we'll all be living like third worlders over here. And do you think anybody else is going to take pity on us or give us charity like we've been doing for hundreds of years? No, they're not. They're going to let us starve. So as I was reading about this stuff, uh, I watched a movie that I hadn't watched in a long time. And I normally don't recommend movies that, that star uh, freaking communist woke tards like Robert De Niro. But Wag the Dog is a movie that's worth watching, even though... Like I said, I don't like Robert De Niro or anything that comes out of his mouth. I really don't think he's that great of an actor. Uh, there was a couple of shows that were, were good movies that he ended up getting the part in, but he's nothing special. Uh, but he acts like he is. Anyways, there's a movie called Wag the Dog where it's all about fake wars to win presidential elections. And that's what's going on here, except for there's no presidential election coming up. There's midterms coming up. So they're trying to take your mind and my mind off what's going on here in the country. Open borders, outrageous gas prices caused by Biden. All of this stuff's caused by Biden. Crime through the freaking roof in all of these Democrat-controlled cities. That's not a coincidence. They want to break the United States of America. And this is partly how they've been doing it since 2014, guys. We're going to get into this. What is it? What, what, what caused this? Who else is responsible besides just you know evil, mean old Putin that just decided to go in there? Well, it's organizations like the National Endowment for Democracy, or the NED as they call it. These people have basically taken the place of the CIA's propaganda machine. Because if you remember... Uh, in the United States history, the CIA kind of got egg on their face with a lot of these different regime changes like the Shah of Iran and all this other stuff that they did that have, that have just caused global problems, long-term problems, and creating terrorism, terrorists like uh, Osama bin Laden, right? Supposedly, if you believe any of that stuff. Again, when you see how much the media is lying to your face right now and pretending they're not, you can't help but go, how, how much of this other stuff have they been lying about? Was Osama bin Laden really the guy that was involved with orchestrating 9-11? We'll never know because the media is controlled by Operation Mockingbird. Don't ever forget it. That program never ceased to exist. NED, National Endowment for Democracy. What, are the, what have they been doing? Well, they've been going around the world. It was established by Congress to take, our, take over our CIA's propaganda efforts. So they're the propaganda machine of the United States. And they're supposedly they do it in a more open way, but I ain't buying it. They've been doing stuff and covering it up with their own media outlets for decades. Uh, so Ned uses democracy movements uh, to bring in foreign governments that are in harmony with the uh, Washington Democrats or the Washington elitists, the Washington interests, right? Whoever's in power at the time. Uh, it's not exclusively Democrat. And that's why a lot of times, guys, People will come into the comments and they'll say, well, the Republicans are just as bad. And in some ways, they're right. But it's not all of the Republicans. It's some of the Republicans. It's the elitist Republicans that have their hands in the Ukrainian cookie jar. This right here is how you expose these rhinos for who they are. Mitt Romney's one of them, for sure. Uh, Pelosi's got her hand in the cookie jar as well. Of course, she's a Democrat, so that's not surprising. Biden has his hand directly in the cookie jar. He is the big guy, in case you hadn't figured it out, that, that Hunter's always talking about giving kickbacks to on his laptop from hell. So if we had journalism, I wouldn't have to do this, but I do have to do this. I've seen stories, and this is a, this is a compilation of multiple stories that I've been reading over the past you know, 20, 30 years. So along comes another spider back in... Uh, 2014. Of course, you know, just like all of these people that are career Washington bureaucrats, they find a way to get in and they never leave. And we're going to talk about a person here who is directly tied to Barack Obama and multiple other presidents, Victoria Newland. Her name kept coming up uh, over this Ukrainian deal. And I'm like, okay, who is this? I've heard the name, but I couldn't remember who she was. But she currently serves as Biden's uh, undersecretary for political affairs. No coincidence, he brought in some of his old players, his old buddies that were around during the Obama-Biden regime. So uh, she's married to a guy named Robert Kagan. 
and you should check him out. He was he was very uh, directly involved in the getting us involved in Iraq and all this stuff and in Bush's administration. Uh, Newland was a staffer for Clinton from 93 to 96, so this goes across the board. She worked for Bush and Clinton. Uh, let's see here, in 2003 to 2005, she was a key advisor uh, to Dick Cheney, Vice President Dick Cheney under the Bush administration. So, I mean, automatically, I mean, I'm seeing all kinds of red flags going up just from the people that she has worked for. Uh, Newland was influential in the during the invasion and occupation of Iraq. So it was her and her husband. They were working together to get George Boy, Georgie Boy Bush, to go into Iraq. I mean, a lot of people on the left back then were saying that those were war crimes because you know a million people died over in Iraq and we didn't need to go in there and blah blah blah. And I agree. Now looking back on it, uh, they never none of their uh, weapons of mass destruction were ever produced. So was that all a lie to begin with? Was that wagging the dog? to get us involved in Iraq. And here we go again, fast forward to 2022, a new administration, this guy is in trouble. He's got like less than 37% rating, uh, even among his own people. Uh, people are really seeing what Biden really is, a demented old uh, career politician that has basically long been expired and should have moved on to a retirement home by now, but they're using him as the perfect Manchurian candidate. Because anything he does that's wrong, they can just point to his dementia and say, oh, well, that wasn't us. That was demented Joe Biden later on when they prove it. When it's convenient for them to talk about that, they will. And then all of the people that have been saying he's showing signs of dementia will be proven right at that point. But until the media decides to do that, it's not going to happen. So Newland, she was most notorious for her part in the Ukrainian 2013 to 2014 Maiden Uprising. You need to go look this up. I learned a lot of this stuff from watching the, the excellent documentary called Ukraine on Fire. Uh, it was available on YouTube, but apparently the powers that be at Google and YouTube decided that it was too much truth for YouTube. So now you'll have to go over to Rumble to see that. Unbelievable. And the reason I'm making this video, even though I know a lot of people aren't going to understand where I'm coming from, they're only hearing what the mainstream media is saying. They're going to say that I am a you know, Putin apologist or pro-Russian or, a, you know, a Russophile or something like that. I've never been to Russia. I don't really know a whole lot about Putin. What I know about is the United States of America and how they go around meddling and pretending to be the world police and pretending to spread democracy when really they're installing their own dictator puppets in these countries so they can extort money and goods and everything else and have a place to launder their money that's off the, off, out of the United States. That's what this is all about. It's, it's the biggest money laundering scheme that's ever gone on. And these guys are scamming. Uh, I mean, just so much money has come out of the Ukraine. And guess what? They've already uh, lost, lost track of like billions of dollars that we've sent them. But we're going to send them $14 billion more. And that's not going to be the end of it. You heard Zelensky in con before Congress the other day. He was evoking, you know, uh, Pearl Harbor and 9-11 and all these other things, these emotions. And everybody jumped up and gave him a standing ovation. There he was in his military shirt with what looked like an iron cross. Used to be associated with Nazism, but I guess that's cool. I guess that's cool to be the president and go out in your military gear. I mean, everything... Everything is, is basically a play, guys. It's a play. It's acting. That's why they brought in Zelensky as an actor. So he could do that. I'm very worried. This is beyond uh, COVID propaganda. COVID propaganda was bad enough because, I mean, many people lost their lives over that propaganda and continue to lose their lives because of the choices that they made during that whole pressure uh, that they were putting on everybody. I can't say too much about it. But yeah, guys, we are, I mean, I, I've, I can't imagine. I don't even know that this thing, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm so worried about it because I'm realizing that this is a multi-headed hydra or a spider web. And if you pluck down one little string of the spider web, you know, there's five more over there that you can't even see. This is, this is stuff that was been, has been released through the Freedom of Information Act is the only way we know about this stuff. So Newland, she, she helped get that maiden uprising going over in Ukraine. It was a coup that saw the country's government replaced with one that was approved by the Obama administration.
The dead was the key in that $5 billion effort to flip Ukraine. So Zelensky, uh, and before that, we were over there meddling. There have been multiple color revolutions that have been started and funded by people like George Soros and other NGOs that, like NED. And the new one now to look out for is EEED or EED, something like that. It's basically the European uh, Endowment for Democracy. They're taking the place of the NED. So when there gets to be a little bit too much heat on one organization, they change the name and they change the association. They even change the country and the origin of the place so that it throws people off the trail. And unfortunately, most of the people that I know in the United States have such short memories that they don't even remember 2014. They don't even remember what was going on then. And Barack Obama is behind this. If we end up getting into World War III, it's not just Putin's fault. Barack Obama is just as guilty because Victoria Nuland and others like her were acting on behalf of Barack Obama. So, when did this war start in Ukraine? 2014. 2013, 2014. Who started it? Barack Obama, Victoria Nuland. They were a big part of this whole deal. No doubt about it. Go look it up. You don't believe me? Go look this stuff up. It's out there. Through the Freedom of Information Act, a lot of this crap has been released so that we can actually see what kind of garbage our own government has been pr promoting and doing around the world. And if this goes nuclear, Obama and Newland are just as guilty and Soros are just as guilty as anybody on the opposing side. Don't let them wag the dog on you. Don't let them fool you. I'm seeing people like uh, James Yeager, a famous YouTuber. He's signing up to go join the Ukrainian army. One of my com commenters came in like a, a couple of weeks ago and said they were thinking about going and joining the Ukrainian army. Hey, if that's what you want to do, more power to you. But know the truth first before you go sign your life away to fight someone else's propaganda war. Don't trust anything coming out of the mainstream media. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I stand for liberty. I hope you do too.